Welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast with your host, Funk Roberts. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to episode number 122. And this, I believe, to me, is a special episode. I know, guys, you're saying I say this all the time. Every episode special, but this one truly is very special because this is one for men who are husbands, for men who are in relationships to become a potential husband, to men who are struggling with their marriage, guys who perhaps have just had a separation or have just had a divorce, and it may have come out of right field. It may have slapped you in the face. I know that we've got some guys in my brotherhood who have recently experienced this, and the reason why we know this is because they, they share it with us. But I'm not a marriage counselor. I have a very strong marriage. I, you know, if I feel that obviously we're, I'm always trying to become a bulletproof husband. I'm always trying to become a better man. That's what we're always doing in our lives. We're always, you know, in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, we're always trying to continue to evolve in becoming the best we can be, provide, protect, procreate. So today I'm really excited because on our podcast today, we have Andre Gabori and Dr. Jonathan Welton, both of the Bulletproof Husband. Thank you both for being on uh, this episode of the podcast. How are you doing, Andre? And how are you doing, uh, Jonathan, Dr. Welton? So, Andre, how are you doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for uh, for having us. I'm super excited to, uh, uh, yeah, to have this podcast with you. And um, I know you have uh, a lot of men in your circle. And um, uh, hopefully the uh, message that we're able to deliver and share will be very valuable for them. Yeah, I think we're both on the same, like, wavelength in regards to trying to create the best men, the best men that we can, Right. You know, one of the things that I was talking to you about before, one of the things, you know, for me that I was very impressed with, uh, with your, with your program and with your message and how you help people is I went to your website and I think everyone should go to the website, go on to the wall of success and the amount of success that you guys have brought to all of these men is unbelievable. Like I've never seen anything quite like that when it comes to this space right like yes you go to sites you see like the same 10 you know testimonials and no disrespect but you know i for me my my radar is oh let's see the plethora of success so i want to so i'm really excited about that but i want to start with andre um and how did you be how did you get into this what what was your evolution like from high school to to you know college marriage like were you married please give us your origin story yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it was uh, it was it was quite interesting, and um, um, you know, I, I'm young. I'm 36 years old as of this podcast, and uh, we started the Bulletproof Husband seven years ago. So, uh, I had a lot of trials and tribulations to get over, including the fact that oftentimes I was coaching men who had sons older than me. So the question was, I know what I'm good at. How do I get through to them? How do I not make this a barrier? Um, coming out of school, um, you know, I I did uh, international business and um, I worked for different corporations. But at age 23, 24, I started to really get into personal development. Um, and some of that, a big part of that personal de- development was around my masculinity. I grew up in a very feminized home environment and... Um, I missed that male role model in my life. And I was fortunate enough to have a few people in my circle that saw that in me and uh, pointed me in the right direction and how to resolve some of the stuff with my father, um, how to uh, be more authentic and so forth. And so in doing that, I started to work with men on a volunteer basis and um, for about five to seven years, I started to really finesse not only what I knew, but also how I was able to deliver that to men much older than me. And, um, you know, one day I thought, you know, I'm not really enjoying this corporate life. Um, I'm really passionate about helping men. Um, I'm really good at enrolling. How can I, how can I combine the two? Because I was in a sales position and going year, every year, you know, position to position, 
I was always top three in this on the sales team, but there was no fulfillment. There was no uh, tangibility to it for me. So I I decided to seek out ways to marry the two together, where I'm able to enroll, make a difference, but do it on my own terms and uh, do it in a way where it's uh, on a mass scale versus just locally helping men. Right. And um, I was taking a shower. This was 2017. And uh, Bulletproof Husband popped in my head. Wow. So I reached out to uh, my uh, business coach back then, uh, Gary Menezes, and also my co-founder, um, John Scannell. And it's, you know, we haven't looked back since. We we, we just really went all in and um, saw the need, saw the struggles that men were having out there. Yeah. And um, we had something that could address that, that could resolve that. And, um, yeah, we put it all together. A lot of trials and tri tribulations in the beginning, figuring out what is the best way to do it, you know. Um, but here we are, a uh, massive, massive amount of success, a um, lot of passion. And, um, you know, we just had a book released that was written by Jonathan Walton. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, our goal is 15, 20 years down the road this will be taught in schools. Mm. Wow. This will be some sort of curriculum in late high school or early university for young adults to, to promote proactivity in relationships. Mm. Because right now, the Bulletproof Husband is very reactive. Yeah. Right? Men don't want to work on their marriage until they get what we call a slap. Yeah. And so there's a lot of reactivity to it. But real generational change will start when there's a proactive approach to it, where young adults, young male adults are taught the differences between masculine and feminine and how to be in relationships and what works. Yeah, that, that's amazing. I mean, there's so much to unpack there, specifically on your journey. Um, so you have, have you been married before? Uh, I was married when I started the Bulletproof Husband, yep. but very fresh marriage. Okay. So um, three years in, had no kids. Right. Now, January will be our 10-year anniversary, and uh, we have two kids. Oh, okay. And a lot, of that, okay. <laughs> a lot of that work was, yeah, a lot of that work was, yeah, a lot of that work was done by me before I got married. Mm. That's why I'm so strong and pro on the uh, preparation. Right. Right? Yeah. Because it saves a lot of headaches down the road. Yeah, the, the proactivity is so huge. I mean, because you know, for us to to work on our marriage on an ongoing basis, I mean, we're with the we're with our our we're with the woman. The union that we create in a marriage is forever, and it's a union that is supposed to bring us together. It's the strongest union, stronger than the union between your kids, stronger than the union between anybody, because it's the husband and the wife, the the mother and the father who are going to be the kind of like, you know, the role models and the beacon for the success that the children are going to have when they grow up. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So the proactivity of working on the most important thing, if you're going to go down and get that ring, makes 100% sense. But I do understand because I, I say the same thing for health, right? I'm like, guys, you got to be like, we're doing the, you, right now because of the age group of 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70-year-old guys, it's a reactive thing. Not as much any as much as it was before, but it's still a reactive thing because you know us guys, we don't want to ask for help. We want to kind of uh, you know kind of mask everything. We'll put on our clothes, big clothes to mask up instead of like, okay, I got I got shit together, man. Like I got you know, like I need help, so I'm gonna go to the person who knows exactly what they're doing to help me because now I'm at an age of 40, 50, 60 where I have to check my ego at the door and go, you know what, I really don't know what I'm doing, so I just wanna you just tell me what to do and I'm gonna do it. That's the one thing that I can I can say that I love working with men is if you, you tell them exactly what to do and they're committed, they're going to do it, right? Like, do you guys agree with that? They'll do it, yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. is amazing. I love that. So Dr. Uh, Walt, Walton, welcome. And um, what is your journey? How did you get to become part of the Bulletproof Husband? Thanks, Funk. Um, can you guys Perfect. hear me all right? Okay, excellent. And you can just call me Doc. Hey, Doc. That's what most of them call me in the group. So I'll make it easier for you. Um, my uh, my journey is I'm one of those testimonials. Um, Andre created the program and uh, <clears throat> I walked through the program. And 
I had tried all kinds of other stuff before. Um, we did marriage counseling weekly for two years. Uh, I had gone and gotten a counselor to work on one-on-one -on -one five days a week for months at a time. I had uh, gone to intensives and seminars and retreats and all kinds of stuff, and it wasn't working. I mean, I was I was so buried in a um, a deficit of trust. You know, my wife did not feel safe, did not feel heard, did not feel like I empathized or understood how, how she was experiencing me. And I, I didn't, I, it wasn't clicking. And, uh, so I bulletproof husband was kind of a last ditch effort for me. It was the, um, you know, it was kind of this, well, I don't know much about him, but I've been watching Andre in his short videos. Cause he was sending out these three minute videos at the time. And, uh, after about a month of that, I was like, well, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. And there was enough, enough confidence there to say, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this, this, uh, crazy Facebook, uh, group and see what happens. And, uh, I was blown away. I mean, within a couple of weeks, my wife was saying to our marriage counselor, this is what I've been waiting for, for the last two years. It's finally showing up. And I'm like, ah, I'm on the right track. <laughs> and so for me, I, once I had the right tools, I was able to actually uh, make progress. And I mean, I, I'm sure you see it with your program all the time is actually creating a framework for a man that he can walk through a pathway, you know, here's the map, here's the compass, here's where you're headed. And then he can actually start putting in the hard work. And it was never clear to me before that, whether it was the counselors or the intensives or whatever, it was always like, uh, kind of murky and unclear, not really knowing what I'm supposed to work on, which I think is why that those experiences are so frustrating for men, you know, go sit in an office and talk about your feelings for, you know, an hour a week. How about you tell me what I need to do with my feelings? How, what do I do with my childhood trauma? What, how do I deal with this and be solid and empathize? How do I empathize? I mean, that was, that was a huge one to actually connect the dots. Cause it was like, do I have to feel everything the way my wife feels it? Cause that's kind of how, why I could never get there instead of being able to get to her side of the table and understand from her viewpoint, how she's experiencing me. And, you know, some of these things were really simple, but, uh, they just aren't out there. And, uh, so I went from her psychologist had told her, prepare yourself for divorce. I've worked with men like your husband for 40 years. They never change. To 90 days later, the same psychologist telling my wife, whatever they're doing in this men's group, it's like a miracle. And you guys should get back together and work things out. And so dramatic shift. This was for us, it was in the summer of 2020. And, um, uh, I just got after it really hard. And then I, I went, uh, Andre invited me to be on the coaching team and, um, went through the first batch of coaches, became the first certified coach in the program. And then we, and then we wrote the book. So Andre invited you to the coaching team. You started coaching men yes. and then you wrote the book. Yes. Yes. Love it. Love it. Man. That, I, I mean, gee, I'm getting goosebumps just because the fact that you're, you walk the walk, right? Like similar to me, I walked my walk in the program, um, which allowed me to empathize with the guys coming in because they see ripped, jacked funk. And they're like, well, we're never going to be like, you And I'm like, Hey guys, I wasn't like when I turned 40, I was, and you know, I was an addict, man. I was out doing all kinds of crazy shit because I was fat and not fat, but you know, yeah, I was out of shape and puffy muscled and, you know, big belly and, you know, had no manhood and just didn't know what the hell I was doing and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then when I switched things around, um, I got married in my forties, right? I got married late uh -huh. because I didn't want to get married, but I love that you walked through it. And, and that's really important because, um, you know, you, you, you've lived it. And, um, you know, I just want to ask a, a question to doc. It's like what, when you were in that room and your, uh, counselor or the psychologist or someone that said like this or your wife said to you said this is who i've been waiting for how did that make you feel like what was that feeling do you remember oh it was 
it was, yeah, that was so inspiring because it was like, I am on the right track. I am yeah. working my ass off here and I have not hit gold. Like it's, it's like the miner who's been yeah. digging for two years and he sees a little speck of gold and goes, I think I'm on the right track. Like I'm, I just have to keep digging. And that was, that was such a, um, a huge moment. Cause I knew I could feel it before I yeah. sat down and had the moment, uh, where she said that I could feel that I was changing. I could feel that I was shifting and to have her affirm it was like, yes, I'm on the right track. I remember one of the, one of the things I think that happened right before that, that was a big sign to her that I was starting to get it. We were, uh, one of the things, big parts of the program is understanding well, the masculine and the feminine. And one of the pictures for that is we call it the bowl and the water. And that the masculine is like this solid, simple bowl. It's consistent. You put it on the table and it doesn't change. But the feminine is water and water could be frozen or it could be boiling. It could be a vapor or it could be a hurricane, a tsunami. Like there's so many ways that hail, it can show up. And the feminine is always changing. And so getting this concept of actually flowing with where she's at, I remember one day when we were separated in uh, spring of 2020, and um, she asked me over to the house to do some things. And uh, first she says, I, can you go work on this in the basement? So I'm down in the basement, I'm working on something. She comes down and she says, um, do you think our friends are going to be disappointed that we don't move down to uh, South Carolina uh, because we're separated? I said, yeah, they probably will be. That, yeah, that, they probably will be disappointed. She said, oh, okay. And then she disappears. And then she comes back 10 minutes later and asks me something about like painting some room in the house. I'm like, yeah, sure, we can do that. And then five minutes later, she comes back and says, I'm thinking about installing a row of uh, bushes in the backyard. Do you think, do you think we could do that? And, and then she comes back again and says, I, I was thinking I might need to move out of the house and go live at my mom's house on the couch if we're separated. I'm like, you know, I'll support you, whatever you need. But I mean, you think about these were so opposing, like install bushes in our yard, in the backyard. I'm going to have to go live on a couch at my mom's house. We can't move to North Carolina. Our friends are going to be disappointed. Like. I'm in the past, I would have been so like frustrated and confused. Like, I don't understand. And instead I'm just like letting her splash. So the next day I'm at home Depot, I'm getting a, a post hole digger and 28 arborvitae bushes and installing them in my backyard. And cause that's yeah. what she wanted. And, and so she comes out and she says, uh, wow, this is amazing. Thank you so much for hearing me. And, um, I said, Hey, I just want to share something with you. I've started to realize in my, my group that, um, all these years you have, I've been calling you controlling and you weren't controlling. I was putting on you the feelings I had as a little kid wow. of my mom being controlling and the way that she treated me, I've You're been broke. putting it on you and my wife teared up and it was like, it was like, she finally yeah. felt heard in that moment of something she's been like, I haven't been trying to control you, but you've been yeah. triggered every time from something back there. And I think that was the big clue of like, he's finally getting it. Like this is finally yeah, clicking. I, I love for that him. because it's like the, the, we're learning how to be that solid man, that bowl and, um, and, and water, uh, analogy is incredible because I've been using more of like being the solid rock, like, cause but there's going to be all kinds of pebbles and hail and stuff that are going to come from the wife, from your wife, but she wants someone who's going to be solid, right? Like enabling her to splash, as you guys are saying, splash and vaporize and freeze and, you know, boil. But knowing that as long as I'm solid here and listening and hearing and supporting and sometimes pushing back, not always being like, I'm not a proponent for happy wife, happy life. In fact, whenever I hear somebody say that, I just want to, take off, put my, take off my glove and <laughs> do the old school, you know, the slap, let's go, because it's just, they got to get out of that. But anyway, that, we're going to talk about that later. Um, thank you so much for sharing that because that is huge. So Andre, I want to ask you something because you've been working with so many men. Um, you know, when it comes to like broken marriages and separation and divorce, like 
how many, what do you have a percentage of men that are in that state right now or, or some, you know what I mean? That we can kind of gauge where we're at in their society, specifically, you know, in the West. It's, it's hard to give you a number, okay. but it's, it's, it's massive. Yeah. It's massive. I mean, uh, North America has one of the highest divorce rates and one of the, one of the trends that I'm seeing, um, you know, we have developed countries, developing countries, third world countries. The more a country becomes developed, the more the divorce rate starts to increase because traditions, mm. culture shifts, um, um, you know, aspects of religion and some of these th things that hold families together start to dilute, mm. um, you know, more freedom comes into place. Uh, more gender equality comes into place and uh, there are just more choices. Mm. The more developed a country, the more choices there are. And it's easier. Um, women initiate most of the divorces. And I think this is a stat that's fairly available out there. Um, you know, 70 to 80% of divorces are uh, initiated by women. Yeah. And... Um, if they're college educated, we're looking at 90%. Right. Okay. Um, and these are stats that you can kind of find out there. It's it's very, even a lot of our, you know, competitors, if you will, um, share these stats. It's not uh, not anything new. Right. Uh, but it tells you something. And there's a there's a, an opposing effect because blame comes in, right? So men who haven't taken responsibility for their part because we're not saying, um, you know, one of the most common uh, posts we get or comments is, well, why is it always the men's fault? We're not saying it's the men's fault. We specialize working with men because we understand that really well, what the man needs to do. We understand the feminine, but we're not going to go in that realm to, you know, say what needs to be done there. That's, that's not our expertise. Men are. So it's not about being the man's fault. It's about, as a man, as a father, as a husband, <laughs> can you take responsibility for your part in why the marriage is failing, right? And when a man is able to step into that, uh, a whole new universe opens up. But unfortunately, what happens is the blame game. <laughs> well, 80%, 90% of women initiate divorce. Well... Why aren't the women working on themselves? It's the woman's fault, right? We're, we're starting to get into this game of uh, who's at fault, right? This is not about fault. This is about what's your part and why it's not working. Because I guarantee you, you have a part in it. Right. Um, what is the degree or the percentage of your part? I don't know. And it's irrelevant until you've taken care of whatever percentage that is, which is your part. Yeah. Because then that's leadership. And when you start to lead from that aspect, um, it spreads. Yeah. It spreads onto your kids, your wife, your other people. Your wife will be the last one to tell you that she's seeing changes because she's heard yeah. by past years of experiences. But she's noticing at the exact same time as everybody else around telling you. I know. We have this all the time. Men come in and they do the work and implement the tools and they're coming on saying, you know, people at work are telling me I'm different. You know, my in-laws are reacting differently to me. My kids are different. I'm more calm, I'm more collected. Why isn't my wife telling me? Well, well because she's hurt, but she's noticing it at the same time. You are being observed. It doesn't go unnoticed. And, um, you know, women do something called tests. They will test you and, um, one of the ways to know that your wife is noticing the changes is that she will test you. And those tests oftentimes will make the relationship look worse than it is. <laughs> but that's a good sign. It's by the book. Right. She wouldn't spend her time testing you if she didn't want to verify that these changes she's seeing, which she's not talking about, are actually real and legit. Or are they just some sort of short-term manipulation to you know, get her back. Um, yeah, I, I know it's not exactly the clear answer you're looking for around percentage, but 
I hope it gives you an idea of the magnitude of how much of a problem this is in today's society um, and, and, and gives you a, an inkling around the amount of help men need and marriages need. Yeah. Because in our society, family is the lowest unit. And if the foundation breaks off, then you start to see it spill over and communities start to fall off, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, that was uh, uh, exactly what I was looking for because I know that you're right. The percentages are out there. I just thought maybe if you had some something, but it, you did. I think that was great. And the other question I want to ask you is, you know, you talked about 90% and 70 and 80%. We know that most women will will... I mean, in my experience with the guys in my my brotherhood, when they post about, oh, my wife just told me she wanted to separate or I just got divorced or all of these things where they don't even know where it's coming from. It's like, I don't know what happened all of a sudden, right? And it's like, well, it's not all of a sudden, but I, again, I, 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 only, I only push them into the, what they can do physically, come in here and talk about it, but, you know, I'm this is not my realm, but... Um, I have two questions. The first question is, what are the common reasons that women give for their their separation? That's question number one, because either one can answer. And number two, what are the things that don't work? Because you, you, when you, at the very beginning, I think you were talking about this, Andre, or no, no, uh, Doc, you were talking about like you went to this, you went to therapy, you went to couple therapy, like, because guys will react, panic. And then, like, okay, I got to do this. My wife wants me to go here. Then I got to go do this. Then I got to do this. And then I'm not sure if, if they're present during the time, if they're just showing up because that's what they were told to do. And no, that think that, okay, I'm told to go to couples therapy. My wife, and I want to keep my wife because I have no clue why she wants to divorce me or separate from me. So I'm just going to go to couples therapy. But while I'm in couples therapy, am I listening? Am I thinking about the football game? Am I thinking about my kids I got to pick up? Am I just there? Or if I'm going to talk to someone one-on-one, -on -one, am I just, am I holding things in? You know what I mean? Like, like, so the two questions, one, what's the common reasons? And two, what are guys doing that are totally not working? Like, it's literally like, Hey, if you're going to go down that road, let me stop you there. There's the bulletproof husband. <laughs> let's just go there. So what are, if, well, I don't know who wants to answer which one, but let's start off with the common reasons. Andre, how about you go first on this one? I'm going to set the context with uh, kind of a analogy. Okay? Yeah. And, and I think it will resonate with you because you're in the physical domain. Center of your body and what holds everything together is your spine. Correct? Correct. If your spine is messed up, then it doesn't matter how well your hands work and how strong your leg is and all of that. It, it won't function the same way. Right. Okay. So the spine of the bulletproof husband is emotional self-sufficiency, okay? The reason why we call the bulletproof husband the bulletproof husband is because every single individual on this planet have what we call bullets, which is a metaphor we use for insecurities, okay? It doesn't matter who comes to you, doesn't matter who comes to me saying that they're perfect, they don't have insecurities, it's not true. Everybody has them. Why? Because it's part of childhood development. You you physically, biologically cannot become an adult, a functioning adult, if you don't have insecurities and things to overcompensate on the other side. Okay? So let me just generalize what, like, give you a, a one-liner about what insecurity is because most therapists don't even know and this. If you were to ask them what insecurity is, they can't pinpoint it, okay? And it's very simple. Insecurity is suppressed hurt. That's it. It's hurts that you have suppressed because of past experiences. And most of these come from, you know, ages five to eight, when, you, uh, you know, a child first experiences the notion of failure. Yeah. And um, 11 and 13, when... A child starts to get a have a need for a sense of belonging, right? Yep. And all the challenges that come with that. 
that's where the major, I mean, there, there's stuff in between and after and young adult, but lots, a lot of the core ones, core insecurities come from those, those uh, age groups. And being responsible and open to the fact that you as a man, I as a man, anybody as a man, and as a woman as well, because women have insecurities too, um, they're, they're unresolved issues that need to be dealt with. It's critical. It's the spine of everything because emotional self-sufficiency is what gives you freedom as you be in control of your life. Um, now, the problem, one of the things that don't work, which some of these mainstream um, quote-unquote solutions, marriage solutions offer, um, they identify the traumas. They, they talk about it, but they don't resolve it. They don't have the clear steps. None. And it's different to pull bullets out take out insecurities yes. for a man than it is for a woman. Oh, it's a very different process. When you go to couples counseling and you're sitting in the same room and you're trying to apply the same tools, it doesn't work because the masculine and the feminine are not the same. They don't operate the same way. So that's one of the biggest reasons. The second biggest reason uh, or the second big item that doesn't work is... I believe in gender equality 100%. Men and women are equal. Um, and equal opportunity, equal pay, equal all of that. Okay? The challenge that I'm seeing in today's society is that they're bringing in the masculine feminine into that as well. Saying that the masculine and feminine are equal. Yes, they're equal in terms of rights and all of that but they're not equal in the way they function. Um, the feminine and the masculine, they're both their own animal oh. and they need to understand one uh, each other. Mm -hmm. The masculine has to understand what it means. I am a man who's masculine. I need to understand what that means. What does masculinity, healthy masculinity mean for me? And how does that jive with my wife's feminine side, because both men and women have both sides, feminine and masculine, but men are more masculine dominated, women are more feminine. Correct. And understanding both sides to be able to function uh, is critical. And that's also missing. And how do I know it's missing? Because tools are being applied to both in a similar fashion. And then they're wondering why it's not working. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the second, the second, um, the answer to your second question. Now, in terms of excuses or, or or reasons that you know wives give as to why they want to end the marriage, you hear it all the time. I mean, I'm sure even when you clicked on our link, you probably were bombarded with a bunch of other companies, and um, a lot of them have uh, started to share the same. I love you. I'm not in love with you. I'm not happy anymore. Um, but, I want to separate. I want to divorce. Um, and it all, it all um, culminates in the fact that on average, a wife will be giving signals to a husband minimum two years yes. before she pulls the plug. Yes. Okay? Before she says, I cheated on you. Before she says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, or I want to divorce, or I want to separate. Yeah. And in her mind, during those two plus years, she fundamentally believes that she's been working on the Go marriage. Yeah. Okay? But the man doesn't take no. it seriously or want to work on the marriage until he gets the slap from her. Slap is, I want to separate. I want to divorce. It's, it's the out of left field shocking statement of the wife yeah. that I don't want to be in this marriage anymore. Then the man wants to work on the marriage, sure. but the wife is checked out. Yeah, That's why it doesn't take two to rebuild a marriage. It takes two to sustain, but not to rebuild. Yeah. So 
what men do at that time is beg, plead, overcompensate, manipulate, uh, because they're in panic mode. They're desperate. And the desperation is the first thing that has to go. It's no different when you're, you know, at a at a club yeah. trying to uh, get to know somebody, but you come across desperate, yeah. right? They'll want to go away from that, right? So does that give you a kind of an insight? Yeah, I think, I think um, yes, I see, you know, couples counseling and, yeah, this, this, I think when you were talking about toxic, no, you weren't talking about toxic, but you're talking about masculinity and femininity. I just put the word toxic there <laughs> because I, because I fight that with my guys all the time, telling them that they need to be as masculine, healthy and masculine as possible. They need to fight this term toxic masculinity because there are toxic guys out there. There's toxic women out there, but being masculine is not toxic. And we need to be masculine because we need to be the masculine person in the marriage. Like we need to be the men that are masculine. We can't have, like, I'm a man. I'm masculine. I'm I'm the I have those 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 uh, features and, and and you know like just just the things that I do are different from what a woman would do. What my wife does, how I react to things, how I whatever. But we can't be just we can't be playing the same role. Like I have to be the masculine role. She's gonna be the feminine role, and together we're gonna create our awesome kingdom. But um, what happens is a lot of guys will suppress their masculinity because they hear that they're being too masculine or they hear about, you know, oh, you got too much testosterone or they do the happy wife, happy life. So they just kind of like just start to like, you know, kind of just suppress and become more, I don't want to say feminine, but more um, submissive in a way. There's a lot of submissiveness. That's feminine too. Yeah, yeah, feminine yeah. Well, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so what happens is, um, you know, like the the your wife becomes that masculine role. It's just like no, you got two. Exactly. Right? Like my my wife is a is a as a is an alpha. Like she, you know, she's she works in a in a mm. you know she works with the police. She's a you know boy for staff. So she will be a staff sergeant. You know, in forensics, which means she deals with all the 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 homicides. She cleans up the homicides. Gets like. You know what I mean? But she's obviously works. She works for a lot. She leads men, and she leads men. But when she comes home, she's my feminine wife. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I'm the alpha in this mofo. And she needs that. She wants to know that. You know, she can come home and just kind of go. All right, let me get my husband. Thank you. <laughs> I thank you for being here. Thank you for being rock. Thank you for being solid. Thank you for you know helping me throughout this journey. You know, thank you for for understanding. While she's writing to become a staff sergeant, she needs to like do her thing and all that stuff. But I, she needs me to be that solid whatever. But when she goes to work, like you know, we'll walk down the street. We got people who she has been their sergeant before living around us, and they're like they're they're terrified of her. But she's the nicest, awesome woman. But they're like, oh, you don't mess with Angela. No, oh, no. <laughs> like she she tells you how it is, man. You know, just like you know, she's also a fighter before, like a Muay Thai fighter, a bodybuilder. So. She is a type A woman, but when she comes home, she can be feminine. She can do all the feminine and beautiful things that she loves to do because I, I give her that space because I'm the guy. I'm the man. I, I run this roost, right? Like, and to, no, we, together we run it, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I allow her to be that feminine side. So I think that we lose a lot of that mascul masculinity. Um, and don't, like you said, Andre, we don't know how to be masculine. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, um, so yeah, that definitely answered, answered that. And I feel, I guess I feel like a lot of the times when women ask for a divorce, they don't really give or a separation. They don't really give the, is it just generally like, I just want, you know, it's not me, it's you, or I'm not happy or I'm not in love with you, but obviously there's underlying reasons. Would you say like, well, stuff? they've, they've lost hope, right? right? They, they don't want to spend more time explaining the why because they've been, they feel like they've been working on the marriage, giving you signs and signals for two plus right. years. So they're, they're exhausted. They're, they're, it's going to be a big graphic, but I mean, I think this will, this will kind of show you what it feels like. Imagine, imagine, um, you know, you're on top of your wife and you're holding a pillow. And that pillow is coming closer and closer and closer to her face, right? Mm -hmm. And But it, this happens over years, 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 years. Well, eventually it's going to block her airways, mm -hmm. right? She's going to feel suffocated. A lot of times women say, I feel suffocated in my relationship. Well, when the pillow is really close and she can barely breathe, that's that's when you get the slap. Yeah. Because she's been telling you throughout that process, 
hey, the pillow is coming closer. I don't like it. Stop, right. stop, stop, right? Um, and I, I know it's a bit graphic, but I think it paints the picture of from the feminist perspective of what it feels like during those times. Oh. And this is not about, we're, we're not saying, okay, man, you are to blame. No, it's not about that. It's about getting clear that there are signs and signals that you're not seeing yeah. and they're important. And it's okay to not see it, but then get the help yeah. to be able to see it. Sure. Because it's clear you're, it's not working, right? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, hundred percent. And I, the thing again, the thing that you said about the the solutions that are out there today, using the same communication solution. Like now, I'm talking about the, the professionals, right? Because you you talked about going to couples counseling, or you know maybe going to all these places where they feel like the same solution for the female is going to resonate with the male, and that's the same in 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 my realm of fitness. You can't train a woman over 40, the same man, the same way you train a man over 40, totally different. And so imagine me giving this, the, the, a husband and wife, the exact same program, and it's not going to work for both of them. The women have different hormones or it's men, menopause, you know, all that stuff. For me, I'm, I'm focusing on testosterone. I'm focusing on all the things that guys are, are struggling with, which are different with men. And so, uh, you know, and diets and all of these things, I, that's why it's a specific approach because this is approach is going to work for for you know i'm not going to use the same approach for a 20 year old guy that i'm going to use for a 40 year old guy i'm not going to use the same approach for a 30 year old dad who's got other challenges than a 40 50 6 year old guy who doesn't have that as many of those challenges because they've grown up and are a little bit older and all of these things so that makes total sense why if you're going to go to some of these things like uh you know counseling and i guess people go to church and try to pray it away sometimes and you know, I'm sure there's so many different avenues that people, that guys will go to because of desperation, not realizing that, yeah, they'll give you, they'll, they'll start uncovering, they'll start, like, they'll start peeling the onion, but they leave the, so, you know, one of the things I, it's like, we're trying to peel the onion of all of the crap, right? All of those insecurities, those boats, right? So that we get to the core of who we really are. But when you go to these places, I feel like they peel it and they leave the they leave the skin on, right? So they're just opening up a whole bunch of crap, and it's like, okay, well, but but hold on, we got to get rid of this, right? So that we can peel it, leave it, and move on. Um, yeah, it's so it's so fascinating. <laughs> Why on how professionals don't see that? You know what I mean? Like couples therapists, like how are you sitting in the same room with your husband and wife, and you don't see that you can't talk to the man the same way you talk to the guy. Like I know that's saying how. how they wouldn't, they, they don't, re, I don't know. I'm just maybe, I don't see it. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I get you. I get you, yeah. And that's why we have so many men run to us from counseling and therapy. And I have nothing against counseling and therapy. Yeah. It's not about wrong or right. It's just about there's some things that work and some things that don't. Yeah. And the track record is showing that those methods don't work. Okay. And I have data to back it up. It's not something... Uh, it's not something we're making up. It's, you know, when every third or fourth man has done counseling and they're running to us because yeah. um, it wasn't working, well, that tells you something. And then when I dig further as to why, it becomes a bit clear. Sure. Yeah, for sure. So in your uh, in your experience, Doc, you know, how does the Bulletproof Husband help? Like, without, you know, because obviously, you know, we, we can't sit here for hours and hours and go through every single phase because we want guys to join but what in a sense like why is it working for so many men like why can i go to your wall of success and just like literally sit there for seems like an hour and just continuously and then still have more to go why is there so much success from so many diverse people it's not the same type of person guy it's diverse different backgrounds different experiences but yet your formula works and so what 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 do you think it is on your end what are some of the things that you did uh, that that builds <clears throat> that builds so well on the previous questions too because i think it's it ties into the same answer i remember seeing a statistic a while back uh that in california 90 percent of the therapists okay. were female 
And I think that's part of what we're running into in this whole realm is masculine and feminine has been lost in our culture. Even though, you know, that if you go to say an Asian culture, there's an understanding of yin and yang. You have uh, in Indian culture, you have uh, Shakti and and cool. um, Kali and Shiva, and you have the masculine and feminine. Uh, you have these concepts, even in the older Judeo-Christian concept, you had the Holy Spirit as the feminine side of God and God okay. the Father is the masculine side. Uh, Jordan Peterson has been talking yep. about in 12 Rules for Life that chaos is the feminine and order is the masculine all through the greek myths so we we have this in our history around the world but our modern western world and as we were talking about the more intellectual the more academic i mean think about our colleges right now they have uh women's gender studies courses you don't see men's gender study courses maybe it exists somewhere but i've never heard of it my school my school with us <laughs> But I mean, that's, that's our disconnect is like, if, if we cannot, especially men, we're, we're, we're a ship without a sail. We're lost at sea right now as a culture in the Western world. And okay, well, how do I become masculine? How do I become a man? Well, some, some instant, uh, carry that over just by mm. doing macho things. I have to go hunt. I have to mm. go camp, build a fire, build big muscles. And we, we just kind of do the macho stuff, but inside we still have those insecurities. And I would say one of the big things we hear from women is I don't feel safe. I don't feel heard. I don't feel seen. Those are really, really common. And safe is one of the number one needs of the feminine. Then one of the number one needs of the masculine is to be accepted, which most yeah. of us don't feel most of the time, or we don't even accept yeah. ourselves most of the time. So if we can both get clear on this and go, what she's been trying to tell me for two years as the pillow is coming toward my face is yeah. I do not feel safe. And we're going, but I, I don't know what you mean. I didn't hit you. I, I, what are you talking about? Like, this is the, this is how the yeah. disconnect is for men. When she's saying, I do not feel emotionally safe. And that's how affairs often happen is along comes another man with some manipulation tactics. Maybe he's got a lot of money. Maybe he's got big muscles or something that projects safety. Now, when she's with him for a couple of years, she probably won't okay. feel safe with him either. And the same emotional okay. issues will come back up. But finding that place where as a man, and it yeah. goes back to the bowl in the water, the bowl does not oh. control the water. It, it, uh, Teal Swan, uh, a teacher on uh, a lot of emotional things, she talks about containment, that the feminine loves containment, not control. And that as a man, you know, you might be a square pan or you might be a round bowl, but the water will take the shape of the masculine leader. So when a man can actually step into that place to be the masculine solid man, it doesn't mean that we are all the same size, shape, anything the masculine can lead from many different places and show up in many different ways that can make the feminine feel yeah. safe yeah so there's a lot of ways to make the feminine feel safe but really feeling heard seen understood listened to um a lot of the things we teach also around responsibility when a man can start taking ownership and responsibility hey. stop playing the victim she will start to feel safer and safer and safer. And so um, those are some of the big ones. I would say the, uh, the challenge with most counseling is that we're hearing from the feminine, but we're not hearing from the masculine right. how to be a man. If you, if you as the man led the relationship into a ditch, how are you going to lead it, it back onto the road and go down the road? And that's where we need masculine training and leadership to get these marriages back that was on well track. Said. That was great. I, you know, it's so every time you guys say something, I, there's such a, there's such a, a commonality between what the over 40 alpha brotherhood is all about in regards to like my, my foot, my, my thing is provide, protect, procreate. We have to go back to that thought process, right? And as we're older, obviously we're not going to be procreating mm -hmm. as much, but, but it, that's the, that's the connection with your, with your wife the procreation side as you're getting older, it's that's that connection. 
and the protect. That is the big thing. Safety, mm -hmm. not only physically, but also giving your wife a safe place to allow her to show her emotions. It's, 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 it blows me away how, how calm, like, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. But again, my focus is more on the physical side and the health side. Um, but I think the, the important side is what you guys are doing in creating uh, and giving the guidance to, to men on how to be the, the husband, because we, we don't know. We honestly don't know. Okay, like like we really, I, I, I kind of lucked out because I talked to my wife a lot. I, um, my parents were together. Um, I understand the role of being masculine and how to be a lion and a sheep at the same time. Um, and, and, but that's from learning and, you know, but I wasn't given like, okay, here's the playbook, right? Like, man, I wish I had the playbook because I could have been doing this eight years ago. We've been married for 11 years. But the playbook is is what you guys are giving. You're giving the playbook on how to not only help with the reaction, but I think this is important for every, I think every single man on the planet should go through this, not even husbands or because I think what this is gonna uh, what this is going to develop is more men who learn what masculinity is, how to treat women, um, you know what to look for maybe in the in your wife. Uh, your potential wife, you know, signs that you made, okay, like this woman, okay, maybe this is, isn't kind of like that connection. Values aren't the same. I value this, she values that. Yeah, she's beautiful, she's hot, but man, this is a setup, as I always say, set up to get wet up, you know, like this is like, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna take some bullets to the, to the, to the shirt. Um, if I go down. Let me, yeah. Let, let me slip in a Please. word, permanence. Okay. Talk to me. Okay. Um, the bulletproof husband is a way of life. It's not about getting your wife back fast. Do men get their wife back fast? Yes. We've seen it many times, two, three, four weeks. And we've seen three years after they've divorced, they got remarried and anything in between. Okay. It's not about getting your wife back fast. When a man wants that, it's just all about desperation. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to get her back fast. You do have a limited window to demonstrate the changes. But what's also important is permanence, is, is can you sustain it? Once you get her back, do you have the tools to live another 40 years with your wife and sustain it and be actually happily married? Do you have the tools for that, right? And that, that that's a critical part because um, at the end of the day, we're actually not doing this for men, nor are we doing this for women. We're doing this for kids. 100%. I mean, the, the Bulletproof Husband's mission is to empower husbands to be the best version of themselves so that no child has to experience the pain of a broken home. Because if, and, and that's regardless of divorce or no divorce. If mom and dad are good together, great co-parents, the role model it demonstrates to the kids is good. It'll minimize their insecurities. Their view of life will be more rock solid, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, again, 100%. This is a lifestyle, which is why I said it doesn't matter whether you're married or not. It's think every man should be going through this and learning these tools and continue down the journey because it's going to make them a better man, but a better husband. Because that is like, when I talk about, uh, the over 40 alpha, I talk about it being guys, guys, this is not like a 90 day program. Like you have, I have three years of programming and then I'm add, adding another three years. So like, this is a lifestyle. Like you're just, you're going to get to the point where you don't, you're just, it's just going to be a habit of, of the meals that you create. Cause you, you just don't know how to eat. Otherwise you, this is, oh, this is the way I eat. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I drink water when I get up. Like I just get up, put my electrolytes in. I drink like, you're not even going to think it's just going to happen. And these are, it becomes who you yeah, are. It becomes who you are because when you come into the program over 40 Alpha, you're not going to be the same man in 90 days. You're not going to be the same man in six months. You're not going to be the same man in a year and two years. You're always going to be evolving as a man and not just physically in health because now you your mind is a little bit more clear. So you're going to start to see things, right? Oh, man. Well, yeah, I am being a douchebag in my marriage. Okay, I better. You know, now that I see and I now I can actually think about becoming a better husband or a better, uh, you know, father, right? Uh, um but like, 
it, it is a lifestyle. Yeah, it is. A, it is a permanent thing that needs. You got to continue to work on it. Like it's not like I say, it's not a ninety day thing, and all of a sudden you're done, and then it's going to stick. Because even if I'm sure, even if you go through the 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 bulletproof husband and and you get your wife back, uh, uh, if you're not continuous, like if you get your wife, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume something. I'm gonna ask you a question. So like, let's say I get my wife back in a month. Let's say I go through your program in a month's time, she's back. And then I stop going. Like I, I don't connect with people in the in the group. I kind of like, okay, I got my wife back. Everything's cool. How many people do you think would be back inside the bulletproof? Like guys rebounding from that because they're not. Because you know, obviously, time will pass. I get my wife back, and then because I haven't done the 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 drills, like I haven't done the work, I haven't like repetitive, repetitive. Like then all of a sudden. I'll go back to my old ways very easily because my old ways have been going on for 53 years. What? So you think in one month I'm going to rebound? I guess I'll get my wife back, but you don't think six, seven months down the road when I'm not connecting with you guys on a regular basis that she'll be like, hey, where's where's Funk? That funk that I had when you came back to me, it was the old Funk. It was a guy I married. What, what's going on here? Eight months down the road, what happened? Yeah. Like, Is that what you find in, in, in this program or what guys need to think about? Well, if somebody stays in our membership for one year yeah. or more, yeah. uh, the probability of sustained marriage skyrockets. Like I have men sending messages saying, hey, man, I was just thinking of you. I haven't been a member for a year. And I just want to say, like, my marriage is better than ever. My relationship with my kids is awesome. And they just, and you see those testimonials. Yeah. They're on the wall. Yeah. Like, you know, they're, yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's if it's uh, six between six to twelve months, they have a pretty good chance. Um, obviously, there are a higher percentage of men coming back. Ugh. If it's before six months, so they start the program and within the first six months, they get their wife back, but they stop doing the work. I'd say half. Yeah, yeah. Half will come back and say, "Hey, you know what? I I think I have more work to do." Totally. That makes oh and it, go on go, yeah, yeah. And I don't even, I I know it will happen. I don't even tell them when they leave, because if it's coming from me and I tell them that, yeah, oh, he's just selling me to stay longer, oh, right? Realize. So I don't even say that's anything, tough. but I know okay, there's a one in two chance that you're gonna come back and say, and that's okay. We'll cross that bridge at that time. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 the same way when with you know guys will leave. I know, hundred percent. Like hundred, like you're gonna be. But I don't say that. I go, listen. I'm always gonna be here for you. Like my arms are always gonna be open. And that is a nice thing for guys to know that. All right, man. Listen, I, I messed up. I need to come back. And like, you don't want to like judge. You don't want to leave that. Like I'm like, just come, dude. Doesn't matter. Like just come back. Uh, we have all these guys in the, in the brotherhood who still here who will, open, like you know they miss, they, they miss you. So, you know what I mean? Like, they miss your posts. They miss you. So, when you come back, they're not going to be like, oh, you came back because you couldn't handle it. No. Oh, you came back? Great. All right. Let's get you back in. Let's do this. Like, that's the kind of community that we have. Like, not judging. Because we know that it's it's like, you know, we've all gone down that road, quit something a little bit early. Like, so there's no judgment. And at, my, at our age, 40, 50, 60, 70, man, we all have those skeletons. We all have the insecurities, the bullets. So, judging one person from another is not what we're about. We're about helping each other, right? So, you know, I think that, that, that w those stats make 100% sense to me. But you probably would want to stay in something like that, right? Like, Doc, like, you think you would want to stay, or, or, or Andre, you would want to stay in, in it long term, right? Because how, if for, for the cost of, a, of counseling compared to the cost of your program, like, there must be, like, apples and oranges. Like, there must be, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, you know, when somebody says that we're an expensive program, um, I laugh because we're not. I yeah, mean, no, no, you're not. You're typically, not. these programs go for $2,500 to $15,000, eight weeks, get your wife back fast. Yeah. Um, we're a membership. Yeah. And, and, and we're a membership because we're confident in our stuff and we're not afraid that, oh, somebody's not going to stay long enough. Because we know we're providing the value, totally. right? And um, 
Yeah, no. I, I, it sounds cliche, but if you compare it to the cost of divorce or the yeah. cost of therapy or the cost of counseling or uh, or uh, even mediation, I mean, way more expensive stuff out there. Way more expensive. Two ninety seven for a month. You can try it out. If it doesn't work, you cancel. Yeah. And there's proven track record. I mean, yes, sir. there's there, there, not much to discuss there. It's it's really uh, somebody wants to make it happen. They will make it happen, and and very quickly they'll see the the, the value, the twenty thirty plus hours of calls, the community, all of that. You know what? The one thing I like is um, it's a one sided thing, right? Like like you're. It's just like a lot of times when you want to save your marriage or what have you. And, you know, and, and you don't know what to do really and truly because there's not nothing out there that may, may be one-sided. When I say one-sided, I mean like it's just all the, like if the guy goes in and works with you guys and 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 implements what you guys are teaching, um, you're, you're going to get your wife back or you're going to, you know, at least you're going to repair something or what have you. The success of whatever you're looking for is going to be much higher. Um and, and it's one person as opposed to, you know what I mean? So there's no barriers. Like you could be working on something right now and your wife wouldn't even know, right? But all of a sudden you're implementing stuff, right? Is that kind of like how you see it, Doc? Yeah, I think it's, it's when we can get a guy to own, I led the relationship to this and he can take that responsibility. Then he has the power to make a new choice to lead it somewhere else. Right. You know, if, if somebody shows up and they're 300 pounds overweight yep. and they can own, I did this to me, but I'm going to make a new choice today and walk it out. You know, it's the same idea. Right. And even the, um, I go back to, if we have this breakdown of people who stay after 12 months or six to 12 months or less than six months, but there's a, there's another contingency of people people who it doesn't matter how long they stay, they aren't doing anything. Right. And I'm sure you have it in your program too. They're, they're lurking in the background and they're, they're not communicating. They're not participating. They're never talking to other men. They're not engaging. And then six months into it, they go, well, this didn't work for me. Yes. It's like, what was I supposed to do? Like show up at your house and move your arms for you? Like, what, what, like you got to get involved. Totally. And you know, I, I don't want, you know, to paint the picture that, that, we have a magic bullet. It is hard work to do what we challenge men to do and to get in there to that, you know, men are carrying around a bucket of childhood pain everywhere they go and to finally have to look into the bucket and deal with it. And it's really some of the hardest stuff you'll have to do. Hey. But a lot of guys will join the program and sit there and not do anything. And then later play the victim and say, well, it didn't work for me. Yeah, It's like, who didn't work for you? You didn't work for you. And that, you know, one of the pictures with that even is just, even just connecting with other men. And I think that we find this, whether it's your group, our group is the masculine was built for a tribe. We're built to go out and hunt together. We're built to build fires together. Everything we are supposed to do is supposed to have a tribe aspect to it. Our modern society has us all siloed and disconnected. Tribal. Yeah, back. He's I'm back. So yeah. it has us, our modern society has us all siloed and disconnected. And this is part of what is causing masculinity to fail. One of the pictures I love with this is redwood trees. People talk about, you know, these incredible redwood forests in California and they, oh, no. they tower and they're incredible. They're the tallest trees on earth, but you never see a redwood tree in some other state all by itself. Their yeah. roots don't go that deep. They actually spread out and yeah. intermesh with the other redwood trees around them. That's why they don't fall over. And in the same way, if we're going to build strong, powerful men in any arena, we have to actually enmesh our roots together so that we can grow up like that. It's, it's just the standard. We have to have tribes. And yeah. that's why it works. Yeah, Lo that, that's exactly, again, everything you're saying you know we like to we like to to you know as we get older we tend to isolate more and that's just you know we lose people in our lives like friends like guys 
you know, one of the things I, 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 I was on a men's health uh, panel uh, a few months back and we talked about how as we get older, men seem to lose friends. Like literally, like if you look around, how many friends, like real close friends do you have as you get older? Because, you know, your old school friends move away. They have kids. They do. You know what I mean? And then guys are, as we get older, so open to like, you know, meeting new people. Right. And like going down that, you know what I mean? I don't know about this guy. We're very closed. We don't want to open up and be vulnerable to other guys. Right. Like we just want to be like, well, I, I need to that guy's respect. So I'm going to close myself up when we should be like, hey, listen, I'm going to like I, I'm the I'm the type of person who's like I'm the guy at the bar who tries to pick up all hundred girls. Like, I'm just like, you know, I'm trying to meet everybody and one, one or two are going to. Hey, OK, hey, how you doing? You know, like that's how I am with everybody. Not trying to pick them up, obviously, more if it kill me. But you know, like with everybody, <laughs> if I'm in a room, I'm meeting everybody in the room because you know I want to also allow other guys to feel safe around because I, sometimes I can be very uh, uh, intimidating, and I'm not. I'm just like the I'm the opposite. I'm like smile on my face. What you see is what you get. I'm very open. Like if we, you know, you'll know my whole life story in freaking five minutes, and then. I'm good because if you like me, you like me. If you judge me, you judge me. And if that's the case, then see you later. But you know what? I, I kind of allow myself to, to open up so that they feel, okay, this guy's actually pretty cool, man. You know, right? Okay. You know, you're not, he just told me something extremely <laughs> thing about himself. And so I guess he's kind of, you know what I mean? And so like, like the fact that we need to, to connect, right. Cause you mentioned something doc yeah. is like, we're set up right now to be isolated. Right. Like COVID like accelerated that a hundred percent. And then people started, oh, yeah. people started to get comfortable with that. I don't go to work anymore. I work from home. Like all of this stuff is like, I see it right here in my neighborhood. I see all the guys in my neighborhood and, you know, seeing how they're just like walking with their head down and just like sad all the time. It's just very unnerving for me. Like I'm trying, you know what I mean? Like I don't like seeing that because everyone's working from home. They're not, I don't see guys hanging out with other guys. You know what I mean? And um, it's just something that we're missing. So it doesn't matter if it's health and fitness or whatever, specifically when it comes to being that bulletproof husband, because like every guy should want to be a bulletproof husband. But one question I want to ask you is like, I'm going to ask you two questions. Number one, if, if I'm, can this program work for the person who um, <coughs> wife says, okay, we're having problems. And the, or the, and the person whose wife comes and says, I want to get separated. The person whose wife, um, wants a divorce and now has to go down that road. The person who's just been divorced, but still wants their wife or the person who's has a good marriage and wants to be better. Like, cause there's all kinds of different phases, I believe, or the person who isn't married yet. Right. Cause my cousin, um, she just got uh, engaged. And I'm going to her engagement party. I'm the MC of the wedding. And I want to get her, her soon to be husband on this program. <laughs> cause I want to make, cause my, she's like my sister. We're one year apart. We live together. Like we, we, everyone in our family calls us brother and sister. I want to make sure that, and she's like 53, but I want to make sure that he's a bulletproof husband. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for all of those people, will this, will your program work? What you teach? Let me let me let me tell you from the other side who it doesn't work for. Okay, because anyone anybody else that it will work it, it can work for. Okay, yeah. there are two scenarios where we cannot help. One, there's physical abuse mm -hmm. at home, uh, or two, if there's substance abuse. Right. So addiction to well, different substances yes. or physical abuse, you know, um, husband physically abusing wife or wife physically abusing husband, uh, any one of those scenarios. For, for the, everything we do is for children. Okay? okay. So from the context of children, any other scenario other than yes. those two that I mentioned, it is better for, uh, for the children to fight for the marriage. Right. Okay? okay. But in those two scenarios, physical abuse and substance abuse, yes. out of the two evils, mm. um, moving out of the home, divorcing, separating is better for the child oh, than experiencing and being exposed to substance abuse 
and physical abuse. So when men come to us and they have any one of those situations, we typically send them to um, some sort of yeah twelve step. We tell them you have to get a you know professional in that arena because it's not something to do, we can deal sure. with, and it will be in the way of you doing the work. Yeah, but. I, my wife cheated on me. I cheated on my wife. Oh. Separation, divorce, restraining order. Uh, uh, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I'm not happy anymore. I'm not married, but I'm in a long-term committed relationship. Uh, all of those, yeah, no problem. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. And that to again makes a lot of sense. Substance abuse, physical abuse on both sides. I want to ask you guys a question because one of the things that happens in my program for these guys is they they do they start the program you know 90 days in their body's transformed they're eating healthier they're more energy they're looking better they're feeling better they have more confidence they have their t their testosterone levels are are starting to increase so their libido is increasing but a lot of times the wife will start to will will demonize that and will try to pull the husband down and like, you know, oh, you're working out again. Oh, you're not going to eat pizza. Oh, like this is a common thing that happens in our program. Oh, are you cheating on me? Why are you all of a sudden want to get healthy? Are you cheating on me? And, you know, I kind of, I, 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 I have them sit down with, with, you know, tell them, sit down with your wife, explain to her what's happening, you know, let her know that, Hey, this is because I need to get healthy. Like, you know, I don't want to have high blood pressure, like my grand, my, my parents, or I don't want to do this or, you know, because I'm not talking about when the doctor says, Hey, you have, you're pre-diabetic, you need to go work out because obviously the wife knows. I'm talking about like, they realize that it's like, okay, I got to get my shit together, man. Like I have to do this program, but all of a sudden, or even the wife may say, oh, do this program. But then she starts to see like, mm, okay, oh, slow, slow, slow down, slow down. Like wh where am I? And okay. What do, what do I, what do they need to do? Yes, please help us. It's not, it's not what they need to do first. It's what they need to understand. Good why this is happening, okay? Because it's it's very clear why this is happening. Yeah. Or it's very, once I tell you, it's going to be make a lot of sense. Um, men's ego by nature is higher than woman's ego. Okay? And that can be very threatening for women, for the feminine. So when the husband comes home, with increasing confidence and ego higher and higher day by day, one of two things can happen. And it's the man's choice which one he will choose. The wife will bring down his ego to her level. That's option one, which is what most of the men are experiencing. Option two, the husband implements the right tools and brings up the wife's ego to her level. Okay? Um, this is no different than women's relationship skills are way more advanced than men's. Totally. We as men, we suck at relationships. Okay. Uh, one of the character traits of feminine masculine is that men's ego is always naturally higher than woman's ego. And she will always want it to be balanced if she starts to see that it's going overboard and overboard because it's a threat to her. Mm. So she will try to drag it down or you implement the tools and you bring it up to her level mm -hmm. or to your level and then she won't feel threatened. Does that make sense? hundred percent. And I think that that's an important thing because, and the reason why, if you're listening and you're experiencing this, like this is why a program like the Bulletproof Husband makes sense in, on all aspects of life. Um, I think as a person who, you know, I have a strong marriage, we communicate, we have the same value systems. We don't argue at all. Like, it's just, I don't, I mean, we just don't argue. It's just like, it's just like you know, we listen to each other. And if we are have opposing views, we, it all always ends up, well, hey, you know what? Let's agree to disagree. <laughs> and then we move on. We literally just drop it. But we listen to each other. I sit down and listen to her view. All right, here's my view. Boom. And then I talk. And then, okay. And then back and forth a little bit. Like, okay, you know what? We agree to disagree. We realize that that's your view. And I'm not going to try to change it. And this is my view. But in the end, we love each other and we're all in the same boat and we still have the same value systems. But I can still do a lot, I think, to support and help, uh, you know, grow our, our, our relationship and myself become that bulletproof um, husband, which is why I think like, you know, 
on all aspects of life because then I'm assuming that if I learn how to become a bulletproof husband, I'm going to learn how to become more masculine, to take the role of what being masculine is, like take on that role more serious. Um, number, yes, in a healthy way, of course, yes, of course. Um, you know, what my role as a husband, as a man should be in a relationship and also in and around the community, I'm sure I'm going to learn how to deal with some of those mental mental, uh, mental health issues uh, spawning from the bullets, the insecurities from when I was young. Because again, when you start to get healthy, you are a little bit more open to getting help because in order to get healthy, you need to get help, right? So if I'm now getting help from this person, I'm getting help from this person, and they're working, oh man, maybe I should get help from this person because that's going to help me when I talk out whatever. So I'm sure that those things can start and um, just you know, the relationships that you have with other men, other people around you at work, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, when you're taking your kids to soccer, you know, as, as a parent and as a father, you're probably going to be a better father and, you know, connect with parents a little bit better or disconnect from other parents that need to have, you know, to have that, keep that person at arm's length. Like, I know that guy, I know that person. Let me just keep them over here, but you're just going to be a better person. Like, I mean, like a better man, um, whether or not you you know, whether or not it's like you're having problems in your marriage is what I'm saying. Like this, this to me, from what I'm hearing from what you guys are saying and all the, all the great success is like, this is like something everybody should like enroll in and, and learn how to be a better man and a better husband, a better father, specifically for our kids. Cause yes, we are the ones that our kids are going to look up to. Not, not the, you know, I always tell my guys, listen, man, if you're sitting on the couch and your and your wife, like if your wife's going out to the gym or your wife goes to work and she looks great and you're coming home and you're sitting down and you're just doing, you know, nothing, having a beer after work and just kind of, you know, complaining about this guy at work and then complaining about your neighbor over here. You know that the guy, the I call him, uh, I call him Condridge, who is her personal trainer at the gym who shredded and jacked is telling your wife how great she looks. You look phenomenal today, Brenda. You look beautiful today. You're not telling her that. Brenda goes to work. Brenda, you look so great. You're always dressed nice. Oh man, you're great. You're not telling her that. You know, the the parent, your your children, you got kids, and they, so they go to school. The teacher, Johnny, you're so great. You're amazing. You're not telling them that. Like, hey man, <laughs> like, no wonder they're gonna leave you because they're not getting it from where they need to get it from, right? They're not, you know. She and then all of a sudden, if you are getting retired or the kids leave. Your kids leave the house, so now they're old, they leave, and now it's you and your wife, and your wife, again, looks at you, and you're just sitting there. It's like, this is not the guy I married. Like, do I want to go the next 40 years coming home to this? I'm going to, I got Condridge at, at the gym. I got other things that I can, I can, I can go to. Like, it, to me, it makes sense why somebody is going to go, listen, man, I don't know if I can do this for another 40 years. Like, look, like, I can't come home every day and see this every single day. I'm getting suffocated just from watching you, right? So the guys, you got to step up, guys. We got to step up, right? Like, I mean, we got to step up. Um, sorry, that was just a rant. But Andre, <laughs> can you give us some lasting tips or, or a one thing or, or a couple of things that, that these guys who are listening can take home? And then I'll ask the same to you, Doc, as well. There's only one thing you can control in your life. And those are what we call your terms. Those are non-negotiable. Your terms must be identified and you need to, you need to uh, live by your terms because they define who you are. And they create safety and uh, dependability for others around you, including for yourself, for your life. Second, emotional self-sufficiency. You must become emotionally self-sufficient, which means that you can feel emotions. We encourage you to feel your emotions, but you're not emotional. Emotional means taking guidance from your emotions. In other words, basing your actions on how you feel. First of all, that's feminine. That's the feminine's most beautiful thing. It's not good for the masculine. Okay. Um, and it has you be out of control whether it's decision-making or being reactive, blowing up at home, whatever the case may be. And there are extreme cases here as well. So becoming emotionally self-sufficient gives you that 
that um, that backbone of being in control and seeing things clearly. You're not clouded. You're not seeing things blurry. Okay, and um, and community, community. You must have at minimum five masculine relationships. No gentlemen's agreements. No bullshit. No hiding out. These are not men who judge you. They get you, and it's it's an ongoing uh, support structure. So those three things alone will transform a man's life. Uh, Exponentially. I don't need, I want to say tenfold, but it's Exponential. billionfold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, there, there's, I can't, I can't put any value to it. It's just invaluable. Just those three things. Love it. And Doc, what about you? What are your, yeah, I, I, I think those, uh, those nuggets uh, speak for themselves. They're, they're so core. Um, what I'll go back to is uh, the previous thought of sticking with it, you know, so, so she's not, Brenda's not ending up with Condridge and, uh, the, 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 uh, I know after three months in the program in the summer of 2020, that when I remember the moment sitting on the back patio and my wife having the conversation with me about moving back in. And she was saying, if, uh, if you continue to be this man, I want to be married to you. Well, and that was the statement. That was the line right there. And she's like, but if you go back to, you know, who you've been and playing the victim and, you know, all this stuff, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do it anymore, but I believe what I'm seeing. And if you be this man, I, I'm, I'm all in. And that's, it goes to Andre's point about permanence. It goes to, you know, not just, um, uh, sitting on the couch because you do have to you do have to engage you do have to walk this out and as you live it out you're going to hit new new challenges new struggles new you know kids go away to college kids get married kids you know and every one of those is something to navigate but really what we're teaching men is how to lead Uh their relationship and a lot of men we never got any tools of how to lead we watch somebody lead from their insecurities by being controlling or passive. And then now we're trying to copy that and do a slightly better job. Instead of actually learning how to lead, Mm. we're, we're repeating some terrible patterns or rebelling against some terrible patterns. And so when you intentionally take on like what the, the points Andre just made, but when you intentionally take that on, you can actually start to lead yourself and then the relationship. I I think about it all the time with my, I have three young daughters and I think, man, I, I hope that we down the road are able to find three bulletproof young men who know their terms, deal with their emotions, are able to be open and vulnerable, have masculine relationships so that I don't have to worry about my daughters and my grandkids. So well, this, you know, it's very long-term. It's a very, very important long-term thinking. That's, that's what it boils down to for me. That's awesome. Well, both of you, thank you very much for being on this uh, podcast. Okay. Where can we find the bulletproof husband? Where can we find it? Um, I know you have a book. And so if you can give everybody the website, uh, the book, and maybe something that they can get um, to start off, start them off. Yeah, bulletproofhusband.com. Uh, there's a bunch of free training there. You can sign up for membership. You can have access to the TBH wall of success, see all the testimonials, which, by the way, I send out daily uh, in no. emails, Monday to Friday. Um, uh, the book is there. There's a link for the book. You can book a call with one of our, you know, 25 plus coaches. So um, you can speak to somebody. It's totally free of charge. Um, and if there's a fit and it makes sense for you to start the membership and it's something that you want, then you can start that. If not, then great. You got one hour of awesome value and the coaches are quite amazing. So everything you can find under bulletproofhusband.com. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. the uh, the book is on Amazon dot uh, com right now, but the link is also on the website. Great, yeah, I'm gonna pick up that book uh, as soon as we get off this <laughs> podcast episode. Um, one hundred percent. Uh, no, 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 no. I will send it. to oh, you. Oh, okay. Well, hey. I will send it. To <laughs> okay, you. Yeah. Okay. So you you should you shoot me your uh, address, and I'm gonna send you. a That's copy, amazing. Okay? I appreciate I appreciate both of you. Thank you so much for being on here. Uh, we'll definitely have to get you back on again to maybe go topic base, um, specifically if we have a lot of feedback on guys who who want more, you know, more help. Right? Um, you guys are doing incredible work in the space of uh, creating better men around the world. I really appreciate both of you. Thank you for being on the podcast. And uh, yeah, make sure that you guys comment, like, uh, give us five stars. If you learned one nugget of information, give it five stars. It helps both me. It helps the Bulletproof husband. It helps Andre, uh, Dr. Jonathan Walton, and everybody who's listening. Thanks so much for being here. And I'll see you on the other side.